visit Connor and Jack, but based on the last performance, 6-2 wasn't good against Buffalo. They had an injured uh, lineup. They've got a little bit better lineup, at least up front tonight, dressed. Your expectations, uh, you know, Connor hasn't scored for a couple games. Just your thoughts on what we might see tonight. Oh, well, you started out by saying Connor and, and Jack, and, and it always ends up being Connor and somebody. So, right. uh, and Jack's a tremendous young player. They obviously are tied to the same draft, but in, in the way we view it, it's Edmonton and Buffalo, and Buffalo taught Edmonton a pretty good lesson uh, a number of weeks ago. And uh, in fact, that lesson probably set us up to have a little bit of success moving forward. Um, I know there's talk about uh, their back end and, and them being beat up. I think that's a trap that we potentially could fall into, and I'm going to warn our players of that. They still seem to play a very structured, strong game. And, uh, you know, we've had our own injury problems on the back end, and most teams have depth, and they're able to come through it. And I think Buffalo's done a good job of that. Todd, the, the, obviously you were upset after the first meeting. Did you sense that it became a teachable moment that you've been able to go back to? Well, my, if a moment's 60 minutes long, um, it was. Um, you know, because we, were, uh, we weren't very good, and, and in due in large part to how good Buffalo played that night. They, they checked their butts off. They were uh, quicker, harder, more aggressive all over the rink, executed better. So our moment was 60 minutes long. Um, it was a moment that we were able to capture and use um, aggressively so that we could take a step forward. I think it helped our team at that point. And, um, you know, now we get another chance at them. But, uh, you know, I, I look at their team. They in my opinion, they should have more points. They, they're in every game. Their power play gives them a chance to win. They check their butts off. Their goaltending has been excellent. Um, you know, so they are uh, they're a tough team to play. They beat a lot of good teams. Todd, I know, I know for you, I know for you and, and, and Jack and Connor and, and everybody else involved in this game, it's 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 Edmonton versus Buffalo. But can you appreciate the bigger picture where, you know, Jack versus Connor? Connor versus Austin is good for the game as far as promoting the game, and you you saw that with the with, with the, the the North America team. The yeah, well, you know, there's two things there. There's the the team North America, and to have the young talent that was on that team was was remarkable. It was such a a fun event for the players, the coaches, the fans. Um, you know, you'd like to capture that and and reproduce it during the the winter, but that's really, really hard to do with 82 games and, and 30 some teams. But uh, that moment, that event was was really good. It was good for the superstars in the game, the young ones to be together and to learn off of each other. And uh, Jack was tremendous. The people here in, in Buffalo should be proud of of his game and, and uh, they should enjoy watching him in, in the future. But. Um, you know, it's for us, I get asked those questions night after night after night. Every rink we go to, it's Connor versus somebody. And um, certainly understand that. Um, and uh, we sometimes struggle with that as a team. We've got to make sure that it's, uh, it's an Edmonton versus um, Buffalo situation. Ryan Nugent Hopkins, a former first overall pick. Leon Dreisaitl, um, these players have to not take a back seat, they have to step up and, and lead as well. And Connor can't do it by himself every night. Is that a common thread why you've had success on the road this year? I'm going to answer that the same way I answered the uh, you know, lack of success at home, if you want to call it that. I don't have an answer. Um, you know, We seem to be comfortable playing on the road. We, uh, we find ways to win games. We've been able to win. Uh, without our A game, which means we, we have some details, we're able to check properly, we get good goaltending, a timely goal. Uh, we're probably not getting all of that at home on a consistent basis. I can probably describe home a little bit better than the road. You guys have been, it seems, a very busy schedule here. How have you been managing that? Uh, uh, it's, yeah, we're in the middle of it. We're, uh, we're really deep right now into back-to-back uh, -back games and road games and that type of stuff. Every team's going to go through it, but this is our... Uh, uh, our grind time, if you will, and um, we just don't practice, which is sad. Uh, it really is because we have a responsibility as a, as a coaching staff and as an organization to grow some of the young players and put them in situations to be successful. And most of it's done on video, and um, you know you can learn many different ways. And sometimes you've got to walk a player through um, a scenario on the ice. He's got to be able to feel it and sense what's happening and, and feel the timing. And you don't always get that from video, so. Uh, it's unfortunate. We know this year is condensed. Every team's going through it, so um, 
it's just our turn. How much better do you think the game could be if you had that time as a whole? When you look at young players like Connor or Ryan Nugent that you could Well, I, I think it, I think it would be really good. Um, you know, I know there's some debate about whether, uh, you know, Jesse Pugliarvi is, he hasn't played as many games, we pull him out, but we get an opportunity to work with the young man and put him in situations and practices and, and scenarios that may happen in a game that he hasn't got in practice for a long, long time. And um, sometimes there's some value in that. So, um, you know, we know what the schedule is. Uh, the league knows what it is. There's reasons for it this year. And uh, everybody's going to suffer, well, not necessarily suffer, but everybody's going to go through uh, those moments. About Anders Nilsson last year, you had him in goal. Nelly was uh, really, really good. I think he was the player of the week, player of the month there at one point. And uh, we ran him uh, for a number of games right around this time of year, I think. And uh, he was tremendous. And then uh, Cam started to take over and it pushed Nelly out. And, um, it was great to see him land on his feet and, and play the way he's played here for, for the Sabres. It, it's not surprising. A big man that, uh, that can uh, pitch a pretty good game um, night after night. He, his, he wasn't as hot because Cam kept back and getting played and then when you did play him, he said to me, he says, I just couldn't get into a rhythm. I mean, I got used to playing all the games and then Cam was playing so well. Yeah, and, that's, and, then and that's a tough thing. Um, yeah, and you know, you don't, you never really know <coughs> why an individual's, whether it's a goaltender, uh, a forward or a D, why it falls off at, at certain times of the year or, or what causes it. But uh, um, the, the good thing for him as a, as a goaltender is he found a job and he's playing really well right now. We're happy for him. Back in and pull the RV and the guys you pull out. Is that just you look at the roster? So I got to take two guys out. So no, it's never that easy. It's not just pulling straws. It's looking at uh, what individuals have accomplished, the opportunities that they've been given, and and how much they're getting done in that situation. And um, you know, it's time for a change. It's time to get those other ones back in and see if they can give us more. Giving you enough offense for the games he's played, or how do you no, look at that? He, I still think there's more there from Benny, and um, you know we'll try different ways of getting it out of him.